Alright, we're here tonight to help launch uh, Mike and Toya's brand new book. It's called The Art of Becoming a Multi-Millionaire Real Estate Investor. And that is the topic of tonight's presentation as well. If you guys, how many of you guys know Mike Chawanka and Toya Chawanka? Mike, you see that? Oh, like ten hands went up. Can you guys believe that? Alright, do it again. Who knows Mike and Toya? Raise your hand. Alright. For those of you who don't, you guys are in for a real treat tonight. Mike is fondly known as the godfather of wholesaling. He does well over 100 uh, wholesale deals a year. Been doing it for a long time. Right, at least two decades. He's been a long, long time. Not only does he wholesale houses, but he also fix and flips houses. A lot of them. And tonight, I asked him here to share his secrets with you of how he became a multi-millionaire real estate investor. And if you don't know Mike, you will, by the end of the evening, he is the real deal. He really does do huge volume each and every year. Hundreds of deals. There's easily a hundred deals every year. Wholesaling, fixing and flipping. And the majority of his business is wholesaling. But he also does a lot of fixing flips as well. And we've had several on-site renovation groups where you guys can go out and see some of their properties. We'll probably be doing some later on this summer. We're counting on it. Some of the latest work. He likes to call it um, flipping in the hood. Sexy rehabs. And they are. They are. He takes some of the ugliest houses in some of the ugliest neighborhoods and makes them look beautiful again. He's famous for other investors following him wherever he goes. He goes in the neighborhoods you guys would not touch with a 10-foot pole. He's always the first one there to get, the, to get the rehabs going, to get the cops going, to get the beautification going, to get the sexy rehabs going. So you watch this guy. He hates when I say that because he doesn't want anybody coming down there investing where he invests. But they do. But um, he goes into the hood, buys up the ugliest house, and makes them beautiful again. Not only does he do it, but so do his customers his buyers, which could be you. Because I've seen several of his customers in the audience here tonight who are actually uh, fixing and flipping some of his wholesale deals that he sold them. In fact, we're going to be going out and seeing one next month. I'll go up to that So I'm really excited to have Mike here tonight. He's not only going to be talking about how he became a multi-millionaire and how you can too. He's launching his long-awaited book tonight that he wrote and co-authored with his wife Toya, who spoke for us a few short months ago here at the Beginning Investors Group. So please, let's give a very warm round of applause for Mr. Mike Chawanka. <laughs> Welcome, Mike. Welcome back to the Beginning Investors Group, my friend. We're so glad to have you here tonight. You are mic'd up and ready to go. I'm and ready to go. They doubled me up here tonight. <laughs> Welcome to Atlanta area. Thanks for everybody's love and support for coming out here tonight. I guess y'all came out because you want to learn how to make a little money in this business, right? Yeah. You think there's you think you can make money in this business? Yeah. What makes you think that? You made it. Yeah? You made it. Well Dustin asked how many people of you have known me or listened to my story or known my career or any all that kind of stuff, so I'm just assuming a lot of people are on the entry level in this industry. Is that true and correct? Yes. All right, so I need to gauge where everybody's at tonight, so I make sure I talk to my audience correctly. Uh, who has never done a fix and flip in this room? Who would like to do a fix and flip in this room? Who would like to supplement $50,000 a year in real estate investing? All right. Well, I'm here to let you know that it's very doable. I've been doing this for 22 years. I bought over 2,000 houses, which means I sold 2,000 houses. And um, my wife and I, we put people just saying, when are you going to come out with a book, 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 book? When are you going to go out and talk, 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 talk? <laughs> and, uh, and in our world, if somebody was selling time, we would, we would buy time. So we're not really interested in the educational field or that direction. The Land Area has a tremendous amount of opportunities to go ahead and learn about real estate. I stand in front of you tonight because I'm a person that has achieved enormous amount of success in this industry. 
I'm grateful for the big man in the sky for what he's allowed me to accomplish. And I want to share that. All my opportunities, all my failures with you so you don't repeat them. And when you leave here tonight, I just want you to believe it's a doable task. Because 22 years ago, I was sitting in the same seat that you guys were sitting at. But before I continue, I want to shout out to my wife, Taya. She's my support system. I love and respect that woman. She's my soulmate. And uh, she takes my life to another level. So, in any event, I'm going to put this right here. Um, I mean, 22 years ago, I was sitting in the same seat that you guys were at. I was listening. I made a career change. I was in the entertainment business for 10 years. I had to supplement a six-digit income. I said, what am I going to do? My daughter was kicking around uh, a newspaper in the living room, and a bunch of a foreclosure seminar came up. I said, well, why don't I just go ahead and attend this thing? So, boom. You know, I went there, and then, you, you know, they, they fill your head. You can do this, that, and the other thing and make a zillion dollars and live happily ever after. So I said, okay, let me go ahead and check that out. So for the next three months before I pulled the trigger on anything, all I did is I went to everything that came through town, every seminar, to educate myself. And then I said, okay, well, enough people are saying the same thing. There must be some truth to this. So then I went ahead and dove in, and I bought two houses in April and one in June. Well... Anything that could go wrong, did go wrong. <laughs> I sat on these houses for nine months. It wasn't until January of the next year until I sold them. Um, I mean, I was 30 days from bankruptcy. I lost everything that I had. Uh, it, I mean, you talk about adversity, stress, grabbing out the straws, relying on your faith. I was at that place in my life. How did I rebound off of that? I had to learn how to find deals and find deals cheap. Because in this industry, as real estate investors, you have an asset. That asset is your real estate, right? So the beauty of that is just, you know, unlike the stock market, you can touch, feel, and this is a house, okay? I know if I buy this house at the right price, I make my money and I buy, and I can flip it to somebody else and make something on it. Right? So the name of this whole game is being able to buy real estate cheap. And that's, that was my focus for the last 22 years. And I've helped hundreds of people reach their financial freedom by them buying properties from Goldmine Properties. Um, I mean, 25% of what I sell is to my regulars for 10, 20 years. They do two or three deals every single month. Uh, I mean, two or three deals every single year. Uh, fix and flip, and they make 20% profit on it, and they just rinse and repeat because they learn the system. Learn the system. So, you know, our whole system is in this book right here. I mean, I could teach a 15 year old kid to make 50 grand a year, it's not rocket science. And one thing I'm going to talk to you about it you can get education in this day and age, you can Google anything and learn anything you want. Is that true? So, it's really not about obtaining the strategy or statistics or any that kind of thing. What I've learned, I've had hundreds of people come in and out of my office, buying houses from me, and I evaluate, I evaluate the person. You know, I can tell you right now that dude's gonna be successful because it's all about attitude, heart, are you genuine, are you sincere, are you the real deal, and God knows your heart, okay? If you're one of these clown people always trying to fraud, lie, and steal and cheat people, you're done, you're a one and done deal, you know? And I see these people coming in and out of my office all the time, okay? So we're gonna, that's gonna be my last slide of the night, is really, you know, your information's right here. This business is not difficult, it really is not difficult. You know, you follow a couple bullet points and, and, and you take action, you gotta take masses amount of action on something, and stuff comes to fruition, right? But, this right here, between your ears, if this is not right, your heart's not right, it don't matter. It's not going to happen for you. Because I'm a strong believer, my wife's a strong believer that thoughts are things. You manifest your thoughts in life. Y'all, you, you, you good with that? Oh, yeah. Y'all agree with that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I get a heck yeah? Heck yeah. yeah. 
Alright. Let's go switch here. Boom. I should load up. Alright, so early in my career, some of the things. Click it again. Oh man, I'm working the clicker, right? <laughs> Alright. So, you know, when I made a career change, my tax returns weren't very good, my credit was marginal, I didn't make any money for 13 months. I mean, I was so broke that a thief came into my house. He started looking for stuff. I woke up and I said, I'm, I'm going to search with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was so broke that it cost 50 cents to go around the world, I couldn't afford to get out of sight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway, anybody that's getting started in this business, the first thing, you know, well, I'm going to teach you how to find deals tonight. The second thing is, is the cost of money that you're paying for to buy. There's hard money lenders all around this planet. It's, it's easy to get hard. If the deal supports itself, you're going to get hard money. Okay? That's not a problem. Okay, but most hard money lenders do what? They require 10% into the game, and they want to see another 10% reserves. So, I mean, I don't know what your cash reserves are, or if that program works for you, or any of that kind of thing. But hopefully, once you get to the stage where you can fund everything cash, you're home free because you just limited 10% of your profits going out the window paying somebody else for your hard money. Who's done hard money loans here before? So you know the pain of that one, don't you? <laughs> All right. So one thing I learned early in my career is I said, okay, how am I going to get out of this massive amount of debt that I created my, for myself in 13 months? I said, I've got to find a piece of real estate, buy it for 50, flip it to somebody for 55, and I made 5,000. Okay, I could pay for my mortgage, I could feed my children, my family, and all that kind of thing. So I learned how to be an expert as far as identifying distressed properties, talking to sellers, uh, put stuff under contract, and Trust me, if you got a deal, it's easy to sell a deal to, it's easy to sell a bargain to a bargain hunter. You all agree with that? Yes. If you got a bargain, who's not going to want to buy your bargain? Right? Because it's tough to find good bargains. So, I guess the biggest asset or bet, bet, the, the best skill that I have um, talking to you tonight and, and what how I accomplished selling over 2,000 houses that I became an expert as, as far as identifying what is an after repair value. Okay, so I could go, we could take a bus tour and I could take 10 of you guys on the bus and we could all go see a property and every one of you might have a different opinion what you could sell that house for. Right. All 10 of you might have a different opinion on what's the repair estimate on this thing. Okay, is that a problem? Is that a problem? Yeah. If we ain't all on the same page, we got a problem, right? If I think a house is 220, one person thinks it's 240, the other person thinks it's 180, all right, we got a problem here. We're not on the same page, okay? So if you're new and you've never done any of this stuff before, you can get hurt. How did I get hurt on my first deal? And I'm not going to point your fingers on anybody else because I take total responsibility for me. Okay, I believed another wholesaler, which also was the lender of the deals that funded me, and he told me this is the ARV, this is the repairs. I think, well, this guy wouldn't lie. He's giving me the money for this. Okay, well, none of that, none of that was true. Okay, and I got hurt, and I got hurt real bad. Real bad. So that was a very painful experience, but I'm not going to blame it on that guy. I should have done more due diligence on my part. I should have called somebody in the re and said, hey, I'll buy you lunch this afternoon. Can you help look at these houses for me and let me know what you think, right? So I didn't do my due diligence, which cost me a year full of struggle and pain, okay? Because if you don't buy right, nothing else really matters, does it? You can't fix that problem. You cannot fix that problem. So nothing that matters more in this business is to buy right. You're not going to steal every house because right now this industry is grossly competitive. Everybody on the planet knows money is in real estate. 
So people are paying way too much for stuff. And you've got to say to yourself, I walk it. Goodbye, I walk it. I do that every single day. I, walk. I can't do that. I can't, that price ain't going to work for me. I'm not going to buy for the sake of buying, and I'm not going to wholesale it to somebody and, and, and fraudulate my numbers because character is the most important thing in my planet. I mean, I want to treat you just the way I would, I would treat myself. Be honest and fair. So the after repair value, is that something that you can learn? I don't know. I mean, does it come with experience? Heck yeah, it does. Heck yeah, it does. So, like Dustin mentioned to you earlier, is I've, I've stayed in certain areas and I dominated those areas. I invested all my resources in those areas and I said, I'm taking a 160 product, product and within one year it's going to be a 220 product because I, can, I, I kept buying and renovating in a certain pocket that nobody else wanted to go to because it was sketchy. Okay. It don't bother me. I know I've been there. I've done that, you know. But if somebody that hasn't been in inner city Atlanta, you go down there and say, there's no way. There's no way. I'm making a Utah U-turn and getting back on 75 here, you know. <laughs> so anyway, all I got to say is the money's in Atlanta. You got to believe me on that one. I made my whole career in that. So, um, so your ARV and then identifying repairs is... And the reason I'm harping on this is because these two elements are going to make and break you in this industry. If you don't know what the ARV really is going to be, and right now we're in the market where something might appraise at 220, but in three or four months you might be able to sell for 230 and 240. In fact, every house that I've wholesaled in the last two years uh, to other investors have sold for my advertised ARV or higher. So I'm batting a thousand. Is that badass or what? No. I mean, it's like zero risk. But was that doable 10 years ago? No. Was that doable five years ago? No. But we're in a grossly appreciating economy right now. When is it going to slow down? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. But I would think in two or three years you might level out a little bit. So in any event, I mean, your ARV... Your repairs is going to dictate your maximum allowable home on any house. What's the max I can pay? Well, I mean, the golden rule that I've heard for the last 22 years is what? What percentage of ARV? 65. Right. 65. If you buy something at 65% ARV, it's impossible to get hurt. You're going to make money. You really are. But now, hard money lenders are lending up to 75%. Why? Because there's not a whole lot of 65% ARV product out there anymore. So, I mean, that's your call. I mean, that call is yours. Do I want to go ahead and, and, uh, and stretch my ARV to 70 or 75%? I don't. <laughs> I love my 65% and I sell everything at 65% ARV. Because if you're borrowing hard money like you two gentlemen did, you got 10% in acquisition fees, right? Okay, what's your other acquisition fees? The back end, you got 6% real estate commissions and you got 3% buyer's closing costs. If you go with the FHA uh, back end, you might get a conventional person that wants, might want your house and say, hey, I'll eat all my closing costs. And you might save a little bit over there, but just for the sake of numbers, you might as well say 20% is going out the window. Okay, so if you're 65, now you got 15% spread. Now, if you make 10% on 220, are you okay with that? Especially if you're using somebody else's money and got no risk? Ain't nothing wrong with that, is there? I mean, that's 20 grand you didn't have four months ago, right? Okay. All right, so... In any event, once you find a deal, if you snooze, you lose, you can't make money in slow motion, you can't have paralysis of analysis, you got to figure this stuff out, and you got to pull the trigger, because if you don't, there's 10 people behind you that are going to go ahead and buy something. So if you see something that smells good, it tastes good, you like it, you've got to throw it under contract, as is, no due diligence, and a lot, a lot of earnest money. That's how I buy houses. I like something, man, I'll write a $20,000 earnest money check. I want that house. 
don't care. Don't matter. It's a good deal. I know it's a good deal. I want it. Now the only problem is, is, it, is it's got clear and remarkable title, and that's a whole other story in itself. But in, in any event, anything that you do in life, does action, action mean anything? If you don't take action, nothing really matters, because action creates an activity, right? So you got to take action. Has anybody got any questions thus far? All right, so in any event, after all these years and, and flipping 2,000 houses, my wife and I, we always sit back, especially our fix and flips, and say, okay, what could we have done better? So we always tweak our models. And, um, I mean, we're very, very proud. We take great pride in our fix and flips. And, um, and now we're, we're, we're even selling them pre-sold. We're doing pre-sold. I said, oh, my gosh. It reminds me of 10 years ago when I was doing pre-sold million-dollar houses in Marina Bay, dealing with these crazy customers that are blowing your phone up every day. So, I don't know if that's a good thing. Um, but, it, you know, our, our product has created a following where people call us up. You know, my wife's the agent. She listed. People call up. When do you got your next house coming out? When do you got next house? I want your next house. Here's your earnest money. All that kind of thing. So it's a wonderful feeling that people recognize your work and, and they want to buy your products. Okay? And that just shows you how hot the market is right now, that it is a seller's market and... Um, Demand exceeds supply. So with that being said, I take advantage of it. If you're doing a fix and flip, don't ever fear you're not going to sell it. Because you will sell it. It's a matter of how much more will you sell it than your ARV or the appraisal or your list price. But you gotta have it, you gotta make it a level 10 out there. Alright, what do we got going here? So anyway, going back to, um, you know, everything you need to know. Hopefully everybody picked up a book tonight. I think it, soft covers are like 14 hard or like $31. You, if that don't help you, I don't know what does. But in any event, um, anybody can learn a system. Anybody can gather information and, and do something. And I, and, and the reason why I'm harping on, on this thing, has anybody ever read The Secret? Does anybody know what that is? Uh, what does The Secret mean to you? It happens to me all the time. I just put things out of the universe. I think I need Isn't that crazy That's stuff? Crazy. Yeah. Like the check in the mail stuff? It's very strange. I think you check in the mail and I got some. Tax check in the mail from my house I owned 13 years ago, like 4,000 came in. It's no cause. You know? Anybody else had a, a, a secret experience they want to share with me? Raise your hand. Give them raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'll, I'll bring you a mic. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> I had a thought that one day I would meet an amazing man who was a Christian and he would be um, all about excellence. I didn't know that he was living one door down. So I continued to move in my blessing and keep keeping my thoughts pure. And then one day God spoke to me and said, do a charity event. I did the charity event for the homeless coat drive. And he said, I want you to invite Chuenka, Mike Chuenka, someone you haven't spoken to in six years. I sent that invitation. 15 minutes before the event was over, Mike showed up with a car full of donations. Three months later, we were engaged, and three months after that, we were back. Wow. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, thank you, baby. But I made me blush. <laughs> made me blush. Made me blush. And you know, I got divorced in 04. And I did that whole power dating scene, you know, um, five foot seven, blonde, you Hefner, <laughs> big boobs, you know, it's for your time. <laughs> but there never was any substance in any of my relationships. Nobody can really contribute to this right here. And, um, 
And that's why me and my wife are just so connected because we, we just, we don't talk about people. We just talk about things. We just talk about crazy stuff to make money. We got so much stuff going on. And, and God is good. And he makes things come to fruition. But it all comes from a thought. Manifesting that thought. And I really want you guys to grasp onto that. If you've never bought the book, The Secret, that was a game changer for me. Um, I got all of Tony Robbins stuff in on me. Y'all know Tony Robbins? Yes. Okay. And um, if you're going to get in this business, you're going to get punched in the face. There's no doubt about it, man. It's going to happen. You know, every day in your life, you go through crap. You know, man, what the, what the hate? You know, it happens to me, you, everybody in this room. But how you react to things is instrumental. And, you know, for me and my wife, it's our faith. We know there's a supreme being. He controls all. And... Um, you know, we try to live righteously, treat other people that we want to be treated, and live the good life because we believe that God blesses those that are righteous. And that's why we wrote this book to share and to give back because there's so much educational sh stuff out there in real estate. <laughs> Sorry, you can say it. <laughs> that. Um, you know, I mean, 22 years ago, I went to all these seminars. I said, okay, this guy wagging his thumb out here, does he, does he really have any money? What's the deal? Is, it, is he the real deal, you know? And I think it's important that who's ever talking to you that is a credible source and has walked the walk before you, okay? Um, trust me, i walked the walk. You know? Turn more houses than anybody in this town. Do that to pound my chest and just do it to give credibility to try to help you. So, um, some of our secret sauces is, you know, mind, body, and soul. We take 15 minutes every morning. We get into the Word. We, we do our devotions. We get quiet. We think about what do we want to do today. I mean, if you don't know what you want to do during the first when you wake up, how are you going to accomplish it, right? You just got to sit still for a minute and think, okay... And things, it comes to you, right? The secret comes to you. You throw it out in the universe, and it comes to you. you got to believe that. And, you know, I think we're all in the infancy adoption stage with all this technology, with, with, the, with the brain and all that kind of thing. And I, I strongly believe in 20, 30, 40, 50 years, there's going to be all sorts of scientific evidence that you throw a thought out, and why did that thought come back to you, you know? I mean, when I put out a house, I know my phone's going to ring and I'm going to sell it. If I do a fix and flip, I know my phone's going to ring and, and, and sell it. If I put a fix and flip out there and I know that, hey, man, I should have waited another week because we haven't punched this house out correctly. My guys are still in there working at it. But I had people, you know, I had my photographer scheduled to go. And then I say, okay, well, if, you know, something wrong on the contract in 48 hours, I guess sort of get upset, you know? <laughs> and then the week goes by, and you okay, why? People walked in and out, and it wasn't show ready, so that's my fault. Right? They should have done that. So, you know, in my brain, I said to myself, okay, this, this product's not complete yet. It's not complete, so, you know, that's why that happened. I had to wait a week before it went under contract. Okay, anything that you do, you got to be disciplined. you got to follow up. Um... One of the discipline mechanisms that I do is I write a lot of offers and I follow up on them. Um, I got files 30, 60, 90 days out because, you know, I talk to homeowners, if they're not ready to set my price today and if they don't get something that they're looking for in 30 or 60 days, you think they might revisit my, my offer? So I buy a ton of stuff just, hey, how you doing today, you know? How about those braids, you know? <laughs> um, good lines of communications. Good lines of communications no matter what you do. Uh, I got an awesome team of contractors. Without my contractors, I wouldn't be up here or I wouldn't have the income that I have today because I don't have to check up on my guys. They know what to do. They, they've done hundreds of houses for me. I can look at them. They know what I'm thinking. I trust them. 
and it's a good world. But you know, and they've been working for me for 10, 20 years, so we're all on the same page. So if you're all new in the business, I, I assure you the biggest challenge that you're gonna have is not finding a house. What do you think the biggest challenge? Trusting a contractor? Has anybody had contractor issues in there? Okay. Anybody want to share a story? <laughs> People just don't do what they say they're going to do when they're going to do it, right? Uh, why is that? <laughs> What's that? A little closer. They're not control liars. They don't tell the truth. They start out really, really awesome. They talk a really good game. I would say a third within the job, then you see their real story. They continue to make up excuses. They lie. They're dishonest. All of that. <laughs> not all. Most of them are. I would say. Ninety-five percent. Wow, that's pretty high. What do you guys say, Rock? You did a lot. I have done a lot of rehabs as well. You know, like my friends say, there are quite a few good ones out there too. So we can't say we can't label all of them as total liars and bad contractors. There are quite a few good ones, but finding the good ones is, is a hard challenge. So you have to really look for the hard ones, and once you find them, you gotta grab onto them and hold them for the rest of your career. We always joke around, we call them contractors. Exactly. For reason, right? It starts with C O N. Uh, <laughs> contractors. Thank you, Rod. All right, so that's a whole night. Saturday afternoon. We so. just wanted to make a quick acknowledgement that a lot of our guys are here tonight. Yeah. And they are fabulous. We appreciate them. They've been around for 25 plus years. James! 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 Yeah. Yeah. We all Steve, you yeah. that you do it most certainly. And I got my sister Andrea. I can't live without her. You got Kenny over there. That whole side is a portion of your own. I've seen her in a long time. Thank you, baby. Hey, guys. But those people are worth a million five to me, trust me. I love them to death and I would do anything for them. Good people. And when you find those teams, okay, so if you want to do the fix and flip deal, and fix and flip is where you really make the big chunk of money because that's when you make your 40 grand and you get to the table and all that kind of stuff, is um, you got to learn how to be your own GC and develop your team, okay? That's right there, communication, you gotta have good lines of communication with people. You know, I don't punch people in the face when they, when they do something wrong. I mean, I'm not that type of guy. I sit there and I say, you know, I talk to them, okay, well, are you having a bad day today? What happened? Okay, why did you do this? You know, I, I ask good questions and I try to get answers because something's always going on in somebody else's life, so you can't really just, you know, you just, you, you can't get mad or upset. <coughs> Just go with the flow and, and just give out love, you know? Some people you can't help. Some people just... If you, if you open a window for them to steal, they're going to steal, right? And once they do, that's it. You're one and done. That's, you know, one and done. I mean, those type of things, I got zero tolerance for. I got zero tolerance for people that don't tell the truth. Okay? If they don't tell the truth to you one time, what's going to happen? You think I'll tell the truth to you another time? No. Just go on and try, try to find another painter, another carpenter, whatever you need to do. Um, focus, focus, focus. Um, I'm a strong believer you can't be good at too many things in life. You know, I, I, I focus on one thing every day, and that is how to find deals. That's what my whole day consists of is going out and finding deals. That's what I do. And there's, I'll, I'll teach you how to find deals, but that's what I do. I know if I find a deal, selling it is the least of my problems. I just gotta find more deals. If I had 10 today, I know they'll be gone within 48 hours. Boom. It's 
easy to sell bargain to bargain knives. If you just learn that craft, and most of you guys can't put the time and energy into things that, like I do because you might work the corporate world, you might have a day job, so that's going to tie up 40 hours of your work day. I understand that. So you sort of are in a disadvantage, and I get all that. For me, when I got started, I made a career change. So 24-7, if you weren't talking real estate with me, I wasn't talking to you. I was engaged. And then when you ran out of money, <laughs> you had to turn on the volume on the focus. <laughs> so um, how many people work an 8-to-5 around here? A 9-to-5? Okay. Well, earlier when I first got up here, I said that 25% of my business people that bought houses from me were people that worked, were truck drivers, school teachers, corporate world, making 50 to 150 a, a year, but they did fix and flips. Can you hear me, Rock? A little higher? Okay. <laughs> But they knew that there's money in real estate, so they did fix and flips and buy and holds. We'll get into buy and holds and advantages a little later. But even though you work 40 hours a week, does not matter. Does not mean you can't do this business. And everybody in this room should, within the next 12 months, your goal should be to do a buy and hold. Because what are the benefits of a buy and hold? Cash flow. Positive income, cash flow, that's the same There's two others, what are they? Taxes. Okay, when you buy a house at a discount, what do you have? Equity. So you just got instant equity. You just made money on your buy, right? Okay, so what happens is when time goes on, what happens to that property? Appreciation. Appreciation, okay. So how can you possibly go wrong with one or two rental properties? You got a renter paying your nut every month, right? Solves that problem. Even if you wash free and don't make a dollar off that rental, does it really matter? Nope. It don't matter. And if you do make $100, $200 a month, who cares? What's $100, $200? I mean, the real benefit of a rental is that you just made money when you purchased it. So one day you're going to sell that and cash out big time. That's the benefit. And then the market's going just off the planet right now. So if you buy a $100,000 property, it's good to say it's going to be worth $120,000 a year from now, right? Okay. All right, let me back up a little bit in my career. So it took me two years to get my credit right from 96 to 98. You remember that part when I got started and all that? Okay, so once my tax returns were right and my credit was right, what it might do? I went out and bought 93 houses on Section 8. 93, I love, I love all my Section 8 tenants. They love when Mr. Mike came around. Because <laughs> I sit there and give her a And it was entertaining. Okay, so the moral of this story is that I bought all those rental properties. And I was a horrible landlord, I'm just going to let you know. <laughs> he didn't pay rent, all right. I don't want to hear it. I didn't care because I was making so much money fixing and flipping and wholesaling. But the second time around, now I pay attention to that. I manage my own stuff. And if somebody don't pay me on the second day of the month, Mike's calling them. Because we ain't playing those games no more. Because this, we ain't doing that. It's important. Because I went through a bankruptcy in 2013 and lost everything I possibly have. So I was broke twice in my lifetime. Lost everything. I'm talking a lot of money in 2000. I held out for five years. <coughs> That's a hard one to swallow. Hard one to swallow. But you know what? I'm back, and I'm where I was at before I lost it. Because of those things right there. Right there. All right, so I acquired a massive amount of wealth with my 93 rental properties because I bought them for a discount 
And then in early 2002, I refinanced all of them out after he appreciated 75 cents on an hour. I walked away from the closing table with one more than seven digits. That was non-taxable income. So at that point, my career just escalated. I could do whatever I want. I could go to any bank, Mr. Mike, how much money do you want? What do you want to do? So the sky was the limit. I started building million dollar houses at Marina Bay. I built all the townhouses across the street from the Mall of Georgia. Things were just off the charts, playing golf four times a week. I mean, it's like, I don't know how I was doing any of this kind of stuff. I mean, it was beautiful. It was, beautiful. It was a perfect storm right there. And what happened in 2006, right? How many people you know that got hurt during the crash? Me? Yeah. That was a horrible time. And it wasn't just for one year or two years or three years. How many years was the crash? It was a good five years, right? Some people say it was seven years. So I don't know about you guys, but I mean, it was a soul-searching time for me. I'd wake up in the morning and I had nothing to do. So I'd go out my day trade. I lost a half a million dollars doing that in 2011. <laughs> anyway, so after the bankruptcy, I took nothing for granted. If I had a rental property, I'm on it. I'm not taking anything for advantage. I'm going to manage this thing, and I'm going to manage it correctly. Because not only is that for me, it's for, my, it's for general, generational wealth for my children. So... I guess what I'm trying to say, I was a little sloppy the first time around with a lot of different things I could have done better. Um, but when you lose everything, you learn how to do things right. Okay, so undeniable. Um, I mean, not to be arrogant or anything like that, I, my belief system things is things are just always going to work out. I just believe that. You know, my wife goes to me, why do you lay in bed and you go to sleep in, in 60 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> I lay down, I go to bed. I don't worry about nothing, man. I just go to bed. This is, you know. Anybody stay up all night letting that wheel turn? You guys like that? That's torture. All right, well, hopefully that you guys will learn some techniques and just let it go and just believe everything's going to be okay. <laughs> Because you know what? They always do work out, right? All right, tell me, don't most things always work out? Yep, yep. They really do. So why worry about it? Focus on the solution. Okay. Well, Dustin mentioned, you know, a large part of my career is that I focused on certain areas and I developed certain areas. So from 96 to the crash, I'll say 96 to 06, most of my work was in Northwest Atlanta. And what I did, my business model back then was just buying all the crappy, ugliest, nastiest houses on the planet and doing Section 8 with them. And I, I wholesale it to landlords. That's all I did. I wholesale to landlords. So the, the business model was you buy them from Mike at 65 cents on the dollar. You fix it up, you refinance it at 75 cents on the dollar. So in essence, you just did a nothing down deal, right? You got positive cash flow, you got instant equity, and you got future appreciation. How can you go wrong with something like that? So that was, that's how I made my money the first 10 years. Well, then the crash came, and all those programs to refinance rental properties, they no longer exist. Banks weren't funding those anymore. So then I said to myself, well, i got to go work in a better area right now and learn how to fix and flip houses, which means you're doing a different quality renovation, right? Yep. You all agree rental and retail are two different quality renovations? Okay. So the first place I hit was Decatur. Decatur was my new working area. I said, okay, if people want to live in Decatur, I'll go work in Decatur. So I transformed that area to houses up to one, one no, 90,000 was the first one I did. And I took that area up to 160. Everybody and their mother jumped in my area and it got polluted. And I said, I can't buy stuff cheap enough. I'm out of here. Okay, where did Mike go next? Mike went to Southwest Atlanta before everybody got over there. And I did the same thing. I took houses up to about a 240, 260 level. 
and then I couldn't buy them anymore because everybody was in there. Okay, so where did I go next? Where did I go next, Ron? <laughs> so I went to Northwest Atlanta. Anybody familiar with Northwest Atlanta? Donnelly Howell, Chappelle, Westlake Rhodes, Joseph E. Boom, Joseph E. Lowry. Anybody know that area? Money, 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 money. Okay, so I go in there and there's no cops. And, and my wife kept going for me for two years. Mike, you need to go back in 30314. You need to go back to 30318. I said, baby, come here. Nothing has sold over here. I'm not going in there yet, right? No, I'm not doing it. So when I go in, I go in. I don't go buy one, I don't buy two. I buy about 10 or 15 houses because I started, I create my own commons. So what I do, the model worked again, and you know, we were, first couple of houses sold for 140, 160, and now they're selling for 220 or 260. Is that crazy stuff? Crazy stuff. Do you know what that's gonna be in a year from now? In the mid threes. You just gotta believe that. You gotta believe that one comp goes off another comp, off another comp, off another comp. So knowing your area is, is is probably the I mean I can't go into Cobb County, I can't go into Gwinnett County, I can't go into any other area in the area that I know and tell you anything of, that I'm an expert or a consultant. I can't do that. I can only tell you the areas that I know. If you ask me a house in the area that I know, I can tell you five comps right now that will support the value of that house. Okay, so is knowing your area important? So how do you get to know your area? Does Zillow help for you guys? Is anybody doing Zillow? Okay. So if you see a fixer-upper, in a certain area, what do you guys do for your due diligence? Come on, I want to be the only guy talking about it. Zillow is a good starting point. All right, what do you do when you go to Zillow? What do you look for? <coughs> Basically, what's sold in that area for what much? Okay. So if you don't have access to the FMLS, the FMLS is obviously the best tool that you can possibly have. But if you're not a licensed realtor, you don't have access to the FMLS, Zillow is available for the entire public. So you go into Zillow, you look up 123 Main Street, and then you go ahead and you say, okay, this house, this house. So then you try to compare apples with apples, oranges with oranges, okay? It's got the same square footage. Is it a 3-1, is it a 3-2, is it a 4-2? What street is it on? Is, is there a railroad tracks? Is there a highway? Is something there dividing the values that I should be concerned about? Does that make sense? Okay, but don't, don't freak out and don't pay too much attention to that. If you can find one comp you can hang your hat on, you're home free. You've got to believe that. You don't need to find five comps at 220 to sell your house at 220 within a month, what mile radius. I mean, Dustin will tell you that. He's seen me sell houses for 300 grand, and they have to pull comps two or three miles away. But if the appraiser sees that you did a quality rehab, he's going to respect that, and he's not going to ditch your appraisal on the loan, okay? Any, any of that trigger with you guys? Am I helping you at all? Yes. Thank you. All right, let me click the clicker. <laughs> I need a deal, Lord Jesus, help me. That's a million dollar question, that's to get paid a million dollars for right here. <laughs> Alright. Anybody think you can be a millionaire by finding good deals? Alright. Dustin, is that important to find a good deal? It's essential. Is that like probably it's absolutely the most essential thing in real estate investing? Yes. Does anything ever happen unless you have the right deal? Can you do anything else before you find the right deal? It all starts with a good deal. How do you find good deals? 
How do you find good deals? How do you do it? <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> uh huh. That's all written up there, right? That's just go to the next page, right? Let's just skip it. Let me go to the next page. You want me to talk about this? <laughs> all right. Well, you could always call me and buy my house. Has everybody got my website address? Gold mine. GoldmineProperties.net. Okay, we get two or three new deals every week. They sell within 24 to 48 hours. We sell stuff before we even put it on the website because everybody wants a deal. Selling is not a problem. Finding a house is a problem. GoldmineProperties.net. Go to that page. You can buy our book. You can see what we do. Your, our deals on there, all that other kind of stuff. So. In any event, there's a lot of different ways you can find deals. You want me to go through every one of these with you? You want to know what a bird dog is? <laughs> it's a dog that has feathers on it. <laughs> no. All right, a bird dog is somebody that will go out and find an owner for a vacant, distressed property put it under contract, and try to flip it to somebody. That's a bird dog, okay? What is a wholesale? A wholesaler is somebody that actually buys the property and, and offers additional services to you. The problem with buying houses from bird dogs, in my experience, and one of my biggest frustrations right now is that Title has not been ran, and if you know anything about vacant abandoned properties, you think title's clear and free. No. Do you think there's judgments and liens, and do you think there's gaps in the chain of the title? Do you think there's... Do you... Yeah, it's very annoying because you... you... You buy a house, you put something under contract, and all of a sudden, you, you know, you're paying for appraisal, you're paying for a site cleanup, you're doing building plans, you're doing all your due diligence for it, and all of a sudden, you never get to buy it because the title is polluted. So I'm a wholesaler, so when I put a house under contract, <coughs> I don't market my houses until I get the title back from my attorney, and he says, yeah, we got this, this, and this, but we can clear it up. You know, we just need to find a payoff. For this or that, so okay, because I don't want to disrespect you and sell you something, put something on your contract, waste your time. You get all your private money in two weeks. I say, Sorry, I can't sell it to you. And there's nothing more disheartening than that because you put all that time and effort into something. <sighs> so, anyway, that's probably the biggest thing that, that annoys me. And it, it takes a lot of effort, it just it really does. I mean, clearing up titles so. I take all my properties to one law firm. The guy that runs title clears up title. The guy's worth a million five because it takes a lot of time. Okay. Um, so the easiest way to buy a house that you know that you can close on is an institutional. An institutional would be a foreclosure, bank-owned property because they foreclose on the property and they wiped off all your liens and encumbrances. The only problem with bank-owned properties, if you don't know um, your pocket agents or people that work, REO, they call them REO agents. Um, people know what I do, so I get a lot of inventory before it goes public. But once it goes public on the FMLS, do you think you're going to get like 50 offers? Oh, yeah. So that's your challenge right there with institutional. Once it goes public, it's like you're in a bidding war and you think, ah, I can't buy this. It doesn't make 65 cents on a dollar. So the clown just paid way too much. He's going to get hurt, but that's not my problem. He'll learn the hard way, right? The thing that works best for me and how I've always made my money in the last 22 years is driving for dollars. Anybody heard that term before? Driving for dollars? What does driving for dollars mean? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Whenever I go and inspect houses, I always try to take a different path. If I see a house that's vacant and abandoned, I write the address down, I do a Snapchat, I take it to my assistant, Andrea. Andrea goes ahead and sends them out a letter, gives me all their phone numbers, and I give them a nice, pleasant call and I say I want to value them. Okay? And that's, it doesn't cost you very much, but it's the most effective way to buy a house. Uh, you got social media, reputation, people that know that you're in the game, networking, bird dump, wholesalers, okay? Everybody good with that one? How much time do we got? It's 8.45. We'll get the mic, we're going to take some questions. Okay. You want me to shut it down or another five minutes? Or? Do whatever you can do. I think we got two more slides, folks. Y'all hanging in with me? Any of this good stuff? All right, pieces of power. Once again, if you if you got the book here, your materials in the book, okay? in here. It's not rocket science to make money in this business. It really isn't. Um, <coughs> and going back to... I mean, if you guys leave here today, all I want you to do is come out of here and say, hey, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to have a better mind. <coughs> I'm going to be a happier person. My thoughts are going to be better. Because when all that happens... All of a sudden, you took your success to just another level, right? Because, you know, one thing Tony Robbins said that I'll never, ever forget. He said, success is controlling your state of mind. What does that mean to you? What does that mean? Everything. Hmm? <laughs> it means everything. That's win or lose. It means it all. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know... If I just got punched in the face, and if I let that affect me, I fail, right? I fail, because I'm not controlling my state of mind. I'm not going to let anybody steal my happiness. Why are we all on this planet? Why do we all want to live? We want to be happy, right? Happy. Isn't happy good? Does money make you happy? Somebody cuts me off. So... I mean, if somebody cuts you off in, in traffic, you say, okay, God bless that guy. He's having a bad day. Something might happen to him. I ain't going to let that bother me. I ain't going to drive up to the guy and say, hey, man, you know. <laughs> why do all that? Why, why, why? Why get aggravated? If somebody wants to do a clown show on you, why participate? Does that make sense? Okay. Remember that one. Mike. Yes. I want to chime in. Chime in. I want to point out number six. Be the person you want to marry. Mike and I had an incredible amount of discussion about that, and it came after we went and attended a session with Andy Stanley. And he told a story about a, a, a girl who was talking to her mother, and she discussed how she admired a certain guy, and he had all these great attributes and characteristics, and how she wanted him to be the one for her. And her mother calmly looked at her and said, that's not the man for you. And she said, why not? And she said, well, that's not who you are. That applies to all aspects of your life. You can't attract what you want. If you want to be a great business person, a leader, you have to be that. So you have to invest everything. Everything starts and ends with you. You are the CEO of your company in your life. If you ever sat into an event like this or at church and said, you know, my husband or my girlfriend should be here listening to this. This is all about her. You're the problem. You're there listening to that because that message is for you. So always think whenever you have an obstacle in your life, how can I be the solution? That's why Mike and I have been successful and we hold ourselves totally accountable for everything that happens. So if you are not where you want to be right at this moment, you have to look in the mirror because that is the only obstacle that stands in front of you. It is very difficult to be self-effacing and tell yourself the truth. 
But to be successful in life, you have to. And every day you must measure yourself to where you are in your own truth. No one is stopping you. No one is against you. Everything is in front of you. Your path is before you. You have to decide if you want to grab hold and own it. That is the most important message that we are trying to convey. Mike is not trying to beat a dead horse about your thoughts. We're trying to tell you that we are not delusional. This is real. Mike and I both have lost it many times. I have lost it on my own. I've been a millionaire on my own. I've lost it and I've come back on my own. Not just with Mike, on my own. Because I still held myself accountable. So when you leave here tonight and you say, I'm not where I want to be, you need to stop and look in that mirror in that car and say, what do I need to do to change tonight so that when I move forward that my destiny is going to be different? That's what all these bullets are about tonight. You know everything that you need to know at this moment to be successful. What are you going to do tonight to own it? That's what we want to convey to you. Thank you, baby. Well said. Very well said. Hey, at the end of the day, attitude is everything. It just is. Attitude is everything. And y'all got to go ahead and check yourself, man. You really need to. Everybody, when they wake up tomorrow morning or tonight, when you go to bed, or when you, when you lay down and you go to bed at night, you, you know, check yourself. What can I do to be a better person? How did I treat everybody today? All of those type of things. Because, you know, it's just, whether you believe in God or the universe or, you know, we're all just, we're not just a bunch of meat suits running around this planet. You know, everybody's got a soul. You go somewhere when you die, up or down, all those type of things. So you really got to check yourself on the person that you want to be. And like my wife said, she touched on number six, you know, be the person you want, want to marry. Another thing is, just that whole optimistic thing. I mean, having that childlike faith. Um, being in this business for 22 years and having all these people come into my office and buy houses, I really got the ability to really know different sorts of people and find out why people tick and what they do and what they do for a career and what their faith is about and all those type of things. Which ones are your nervous nellies? Which ones fly with the seat of their pants? And which ones are risk takers, okay? And I gotta tell you that you, you just got to go ahead and have that child mentality faith. It's going to work out. It really is not that big of a deal. You can't worry about it. Do not worry about it. It will work out. This business is really not that complicated. And you can make a lot, a lot of money doing it. It really is. Okay, so going back to a couple brain elements would be... Um, Everybody has problems every, every day. Y'all know it. Do you focus on the problem or do you focus on the solution? Solutions. Yeah. Okay, shoot. My deal's not closing today. How am I going to find my deal on Friday if this deal doesn't close? Oh, my God. I want to jump out of the window. It's going to happen. You might do a simultaneous closing on Friday. You know, the deal you're supposed to close on Tuesday might close Friday morning, and then you deal you got on Friday afternoon. And I've been there a million times, man, skating on the seat of my pants, wondering how I'm going to fund this deal, or that deal, or that deal. Trust me, man. You talked about stress and anxiety. Been there, done that. Um, I guess the question i got to ask everybody in this, in pertaining to real estate what, what biggest fear do you have? Why is not everybody here doing a fix and flip right now? Fear of knowledge. <laughs> I guess they need a mic back there. But at the end of the day, whether you seek, if you, you succeed in athletics or your job or any endeavor you've ever been through in your whole life, everybody fears something, right? I mean, if you're a, a closer pitcher and you're in the ninth inning, it's tied to the 
the ball game's tied 7-7 seven, seven, and you're in, is that pitcher going to think about, oh no, am I going to lose this ball game for my team right now? And he starts thinking a bunch of negative thoughts and starts throwing balls and all of a sudden he's, he's behind in the count and a guy just lights one up in the gap on him. No, I mean, you got to go in there and say, hey man, I own this mound, I'm going to whiff that guy. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing it right down his throat. It applies to everything that you do. You cannot have fear in something. So once again, I mean, if I want to get anything out to everybody in this room here tonight, is you gotta have better. You gotta control your thoughts and have better thoughts in life. It manifests everything that you do. Okay. And that's the whole thing. I mean, you know, being a servant. My wife and I, we try to be a servant. We try to help people all the time. We take phone calls, people run out of money on their jobs, say, hey, Mike, can you help me? I said, you got to be kidding, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we finish their rehab and sell their house, and then, you know, what if we didn't help them, what would happen? Their house would go in foreclosure, and a bunch of bad stuff would help happen, and so, you know, I mean, we, we you got to help others. The more people you help, the more... Good things happen to you. Um, let's go on to this. Let's get it wrapped up here. All right, I'm not going to talk about the whole wholesaler thing. Because um, you guys get that, right? The difference between wholesalers and bird dogs and flippers and all that other kind of stuff. It's just no matter wherever you find a house, no matter who it's from, find out if that person is credible, how long they've been in the business, are they the real deal? And most importantly, are their numbers right? What do y'all do to check your numbers out? What do you do? ARV. You got to be comfortable with your comparables, right? Know your areas. Repairs. If you guys have never done repair estimates before, you know, go walk through Lowe's or Home Depot. We'll walk up in every aisle. Know what doors and windows cost. Know what trim costs. Know what HVA system costs. Know what, what lumber costs. you got to know your cost in this business because in essence, you really are a builder if you're a rehabber, right? So you got to be knowledgeable of all these little things. Yeah, I'm making more work for my camera. All right. We talked about the buy and hold strategy, right? Okay, let me back up real quick. So if you're doing fix and flips and stuff like that, how are you going to protect yourself? Do you think your contractor is going to go ahead and buy materials and all your materials are going to go to your job site? Huh? Right? Okay. Don't be naive. Always validate everything that you do. I'm not saying you shouldn't trust people. <laughs> trust but verify. I'm just saying trust but verify. Man, why do you got four toilets going to that house, huh? That's only a two bedroom house. <laughs> Something's wrong around right here. Okay? Read your invoices. Uh, that's what we do every morning. We pay home people invoices. I got a big account with them. I get discounts, pro rewards, all that kind of thing. So send up, set up vendor relationships, getting your materials cheap. Um, once again, generational wealth. I mean, when keeping going in, if you guys all got to get a buy and hold, man, you really do. Um, if I was single and getting out of college, what would I do? I would buy a house, I would live in it two years, get my tax break, sell it, hold it as a rental, rinse and dupe. Duplicate that until I found somebody I want to get married with, and then I'd have all these rental properties, and I would have positive cash flow and all that kind of stuff. Everybody get the buy and hold mentality. More work for Mike here. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I talked to you about managing your jobs, about as far as checking invoices and all that kind of stuff. You know, you're going to get hurt doing that. Um, good lines of communications. Okay, one key component that I see most often with people that I wholesale houses to and they're doing fix and flip is 
people get underfunded. What happens when you get underfunded? You cut corners, right? What happens when you cut corners? The house is not as pretty as it should be. And then you, they come to us and say, Mike, sell me, sell my house for me. And I say, I can't do that because you still need another $10,000 worth of work in it. So, a couple elements of that. Don't ever go into any deal underfunded. If you, got a, if you know you're going to get a rock and a hard spot, and your dad, your uncle, your aunt, brother, sister, you got reserves, you got money in your IRA, is there other places where you can get resources? That's why if you go to a hard money lender, they're going to ask you for 10% down, so you got skin in the game, and they want to see 10% reserves because if you have cost overruns, are you going to have cost overruns in this business? Yes. Is it inevitable? Yes. Is it like dying and paying taxes? You will have cost overruns because there are latent defects. There's something going to happen that you just don't know about when you walk the house the first time with your contractor. So just get over it. And don't get a bad attitude about it. It's going to happen. You are going to have cost overruns. But if you buy at 65 cents on a dollar, that cost overruns built into it, right? And the fact that we're in the era of massive appreciation right now, that's going to solve that problem too. So that's going to protect yourself. But please, my heart goes out to anybody that goes in. And I won't even sell a house to somebody that if I feel they're underfunded. Because I don't want them to get hurt. And I don't feel like bailing people out at the, at the 11th hour saying, Hey, Mike, um, I don't have money for fixtures, landscaping, and my fencing right now. Uh, can you help me out and finish my house and sell it for you? Okay, come on, man. Um, <laughs> how many times have we done that this year? You know, I love you, but <laughs> um, that's a tough nut. So, if you, I guess where I'm trying to go with this is, if you if you do a great rehab, does, that, does everybody feel like they can do a great rehab in here? If you watch enough HGTV, you sort of get a gist on how to how to do a house. Does anybody feel uncomfortable rehabbing a house, or has never done it before? Okay. You love you? So you should probably bring in a partner on your first deal that might have done a flip or two. Um, and a real good component too is when you're doing your ARV searching for comps, go ahead and look at other people's work. Okay, who am I competing with? What did their rehab look like? What did their kitchen look like? Do they got a farm stick? Do they got towel backslap? What do their bathrooms look, look like? Okay, do they got shower doors? What kind of, do they got a rainforest shower? What extra bling did they put in their house that's going to make it pop? Did they do an open floor plan? Do they got vaulted ceilings? Do they got cross beams? Did, what kind of hardwoods? You got your little shit two-inch hardwoods or they do four-inch planks in there? You know, you got to you gotta do a good rehab because if you do a good rehab, people are going to fight over your house and your 220 house is going to go up to 230. I mean, I just, we did a, uh, um, we did a renovation rehab over around my house on Rock Mart. The original ARV came in at 210. Guess what I sold that house for? I listed it for 260, sold it for 270 conventional with no closing costs. Is that a home run? Yes. Who'd ever thought, right? It took me four and a half months to do the rehab. Normally, I could get my rehabs done in... Uh, 90 days and get a contract in it within the first couple days and then close it in four months. So, I, you know, the goal is to turn your money three times a year. Every four months, you should turn your money. So, if you're making 20% on your money, you're making 60% on your money. Where are you going to find that? Is the stock market offer you 60%? Is real estate a good thing? Real estate's a beautiful thing. All right, let me close this thing out here. All right, last slide here. Uh, you guys tell me about this. What we've been talking about it all night is my it, our thoughts things. All right, give me an example where a thought is a thing. Come on, help me out here. All right, right there. Thank you. Go, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Get the mic on. Yeah. 
everything that you're looking at comes from a thought. Someone thought it, someone went to the manufacturer, and it produced. Right, exactly. Like we got electricity because somebody thought we need electricity one day, right? We got internet, somebody said, hey, we need to communicate people all around the world. Where the government can't control your freedom of speech, so we got internet now, huh? And what we got next? Cryptocurrency. <laughs> hey, I'm Angela Johnson from Global Capital Investments. If you need money for your deals, you can look me up um, on YouTube or on the internet. But I wanted to say that thoughts do become things, and like The Secret talked about, he said if you can ask for something, and you can believe when you ask for it from the universe, from God, then you can receive that. And if you receive that, and you see, you close your eyes and see in your mind's eye the vision of you obtaining that, the mind cannot determine the difference from you getting it and actually imagining it. And eventually you achieve it. So, Amen. Okay. All right, all right. All right, well, let's close this thing out. Give me three things that you guys learned tonight and then we'll, we'll shut it down. What did you learn tonight? Amen. And uh, what your wife said, I like that as well about being the person you want to marry. Amen to that. Thank you very much. Yep. All right, that's one. We need two more. Believe it, receive it, it's mine. Amen to that. <laughs> receive, believe, mm -hmm. achieve. Okay. Mind over matters. Mind, Mind over matters. matters. All right, you guys, thank you very much. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I love you, and I wish you all the success in the world. Thank you. Did you guys enjoy that? Yeah. All right, Alan, you get the mic for me? All right, Mike is set up in the next room to do his book signing. We've got paperback books out front. We've got hardback books out front. Both Toya and Mike are ready to sign your books. As I was saying, we've got uh, paperback books out front for $14.95, hardback books out front for $30.95. And Mike has a table set up in the next room. They will both personally sign the book for you tonight. But again, a lot of what, about what Mike talked about tonight it's how you get your mind right. You gotta have the right thoughts. This is a very, very simple business. Notice I said simple. It's not rocket science. But it's not always easy. It's simple, but not easy. So, we spent the last year or two writing this book, putting a lot of his thoughts down on paper about how you can do this business. So check it out. Learn about his secrets of how to become a multi-millionaire real estate investor. The book is out front. chrissy has got again $14.95 for paperback books, $30.95 for the hardbacks, and Toya and Mike are signing on next door. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and kill the Facebook um, feed. We appreciate you guys all being here tonight. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. We've had a great event. Right, let's give it up one last time for Mike Schwank for being here tonight. Hopefully, all you guys at Facebook and Home Online enjoyed it. So we'll see you next time. Good night, everybody on Facebook, and I am blessed.